Welcome to Riverbend Talon on WBGZ. Brought to you by the Halpin Music Company. That's right. Brought to you by the Halpin Music Company. Also brought to you by Mr. Matt Van Force, uh, Macias Insurance. Another Thursday night, another sea shanty sing-along underway down at Morrison's Irish Pub. And uh, Pigpen, you're going to have to uh, go down to the night market tonight to get your fries. <laughs> Bring me the fries. No, they're not going to bring them to you. Oh, they're not? No, you got to go down there. Bring me the fries. Oh, bring me the fires. I'm sorry. That's right. You know, it's close. I'm slightly listexic. I get get stuff mixed up. I I do have a cancellation to announce. Elvis has been canceled. Oh. (laughs) Oh, Oh, no. Yeah, Steve Davis's Elvis uh, now going to go down at uh, Vitalto Music in the Park. There's a familiar voice in here. Wait a minute. There's another voice. Who was that? Was that that Mr. Tom Swain? That was him. (laughs) (laughs) He's in the house along with Huey. I mean, sorry, that's how I... (laughs) And you're going to always wait a little while for that. That's good. Steve Steve Tennant. Boy, you know all the old stuff. I do, man. <laughs> I remember you guys sitting around doing Looney Tunes. Yeah, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't tell me it was you. I just thought it was Scrap. I thought, well, he doesn't know much. I mean, nah. <laughs> he's going to believe whatever I tell him. He doesn't know anything, right. man. <laughs> yeah. Steve Tennant, a.k.a. Bob Seger, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. you got to be far away for that one. Yeah. Up, up here, I guess. I'm just Steve. Yeah. <laughs> I've been a lot of stuff worse than Steve. Trust me, I'm okay with that one. <laughs> Bob Seger is uh, Silver Bullet, STL, the uh, tribute band that you front, and uh, playing uh, July 7th and 8th at the Wild E Theater, and tickets still available, or you sell them out already? Mm, the, I think the Saturday the 8th is sold out, and there's five single seats left on the 7th, it looks yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'd like to get rid of them while we're here on the radio station, if we could do that, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, so uh, that's been several shows now you've done over there at the Wildy, right? It's been over a decade. Whenever Tom Swain started booking it, we were one of the first ones that played there, and we've been there every year. Thanks, you know, thank God for Tom and Al Canal and all the guys yeah. that put us there. You know, the yeah. great crowds. You, you, it's just almost a built-in crowd. You know, you just you just got to not drop the ball pretty much. And, We'll get to that in just a second. I want to go over what's happening tonight around the River Bend. We got a Things are already happening. huge list because we go right into a Tuesday uh, this weekend because of uh, the holiday. So, uh, yeah, trivia night down at the uh, conservatory at 630, cross the line at Fast Eddie's from 7 to 11, open mic later at uh, Raging Cajun in Alton. Cricket and the Grill and Avocados of a Grafton Music in a Park from 7 to 9. Grand Pagano underway at George's Local Brew in Jerseyville. And Ed Belling underway at Big Daddy's in Edwardsville. Shotgun, or Salmon Creek, sorry. <laughs> Wrong Creek, bro. Well, I got Shotgun <laughs> Creek on, so, you know, I'm blind. I don't know which one to read. <laughs> Salmon Creek. 7.30 tonight uh, until 10.30 at Deutz Village Inn. Mo Pleasure already underway down at Patrick's in Granite City. We know it's Eddie's. That's what I know, Eddie's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I worked there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when it was Eddie's Lounge and Drive-In Liquors. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. There, there was a real Eddie, <laughs> oddly enough. You know, I think there was a real Eddie. Uh, also going on tonight, open mic with uh, Toxic Johnny at the new venue at Old Herald Brewing in Collinsville from 6.30 to 9.30. Borderline underway at the Prairie Inn in Dorsey. They got the Experience Live Music Row going on. Every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for well over a year now down there in Belva. That's an amazing thing. That's, that's probably got to be going on two years almost. I don't know. It seems like it's been going on a long time. Well, if we're going by pig pen time, it's hard telling. Yeah, because well, <laughs> just the last five minutes well. felt like eight and before. <laughs> <laughs> also <laughs> tonight on Facebook, Tommy Carlos oh, with a six-song EP release at 6.30, Facebook yeah. Live. And our buddy Colt Ball and friends, hey, hey, hey. Marshall and Gracia, 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. at right Broadway Oyster Bar in St. Louis. Man, Colt, Colt is a mover and a shaker, man. That guy's playing all over the place. Yeah. And and Tommy, I guess, uh, it breaking out to just being a songwriter and starting to play more and more. Yep, you yeah, got, we see him more and more, don't you? See yeah. More. Like a million spins off of... Uh, one yeah. of those tunes off of that last release so yeah he does a, he's good though yeah, yeah he's oh yeah he, he's like yeah i'm on my sixth uh you know contract whatever it is yeah <laughs> publishing I contract he was just a local guy he worked at the fruit stand or something oh yeah and, uh, he was he hadn't broke out yet and he had a bunch of good stuff though yeah well you, you know he, he did that thing where he just 
drove down to Nashville and said, I want to be a songwriter and just did it, man. I wonder what door he knocked on. I've been thinking, like, I could go knock on a door, but it probably well, wouldn't work the same. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I yeah, think yeah, right. he, I was going to say, I think he knocked on a lot until he got one yeah. to sign him. And then when they dropped him, by then he was good enough that he was able to pick yeah. up another. And, you know, I, yeah, you know. Good songwriter for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Mr. Carlos. So uh, we're getting him props, aren't we? We're going to have to send him a bill for this one. Yeah. <laughs> you owe me yeah. three fifty. <laughs> I wasted thirty seconds of my time. <laughs> that was that was not a waste, man. Right. No, was, he was a he's a wonderful guest. We had him on, and yeah, uh, yeah, really interesting guy. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Is that our that's our Friday or our Thursday evening? Yeah. It does. See, it, there is one already. more announcement I have to make. It's not a good announcement. I already know what it is. Okay. Well, there's several. So. <sighs> Which one do you think it is? Gabby. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah, heard yeah. That. We lost That's a good awful. one. Oh, yeah. Yep. We yep. lost a good one. Gabby McGrath, uh, class of 1969, Roxana. Yeah. Wow. And he he passed was a classic away. old dude, too. And oh, anyone man. who's met him can tell you he yeah. is a storyteller. Oh, yeah. I used to live up the street from him. I think it was Hillcrest or something 30 years ago or 20 years ago, and he had this old hippie van outside. <laughs> I didn't know who he was at the time, you know, and I come to find out it was it was him, but there was always something going on at that house. I mean, he was a happy guy. Yeah. You know, missed by all. Fat but, Cats, know. he used to play there with a band called Rogue. And, and uh, yeah, that's he, right. he was a wild man. He, he, he was like Mick Jagger on stage all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was great. The last yeah. time I seen him, uh, I went to Dave Zimmerman's benefit. We had Dave on, and uh, unfortunately, Dave has passed away since uh, since we last uh, visited here. We tried to get on. We was on once live in, in June, but a lot happened in June. Yeah, there was a lot, a lot going on in June. It's yeah, been a long five away. years for musicians, really. <laughs> yeah. He uh, passed away back on the 1st of June. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. And uh, Gabby played that benefit, and that was the night he told me that— uh, and this this will tell you how old he was. He told me, you know, I took LSD when it was legal. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> I, I licked a lot of frogs, and I never got exactly what they were talking about. And I'm, that was probably I'm LSD not, 25, not some some guy made in a bathtub. <laughs> oh, yeah. It probably was whatever they had back then. Yeah. Yeah. Housley. From yeah. Housley's Kitchen. What a long career, though. You know, that, that oh, was, yeah. I. 40 years, 50 years of playing music. I remember hearing his name when I first... I was young. I, I was like a, a teenager. Wasn't even getting into bars yet or anything. Yeah. And was just like buying... Started hanging out at Jody Hopper's. Yeah. You know, the yeah. day they opened, I started hanging out in that joint and finding out about these other cats that, you know... Yeah. Uh, knew what they were doing, unlike me and my friends who... <laughs> Yeah. Still to this day, don't. <laughs> I sure don't. Right. Sure don't. <laughs> Thank God for that. I'd be out of business. If, if I didn't if have time, right, right, I'd, I'd be upside down all the time. I didn't know which way to go. <laughs> he really was, is, there's a lot involved that I don't even see. You know, I don't have to see it. And, and oh, it yeah. just goes on. And, and uh, I say to the bands, if you don't have an agent, you're just wasting time because you're not going to get where you need to be. You know, that's that's not your job is to get where you need to be. That's someone else's. And anyway. <laughs> That's an old right. argument. You could argue right. that with people forever. Right. Your, your job is to get on stage and That's put on a show. Yeah. We, we have an agreement that he don't sing and I don't book. Because okay. he looks more so like Bob Seger than me. Sing, look at him. Yeah. <laughs> he looks more like Bob. <laughs> look at him. I mean, honestly, if I could just duct, you know, duct tape him up to the mic stand and go and stand behind him, you know, and just do the thing. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I swear people think that he's the guy when we show up to jobs we haven't played oh, before. Yeah, it's funny. I get that all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm his dumb roadie or whatever, and that's Bob Seger. And, uh, the yeah. One guy in Chicago come up to me, and he goes, start talking to me about the show. And I was telling and then finally I go, I'm not in, actually in the band. <laughs> well, why not? You look just like Bob Seger. You should be in there. I said, no, you don't want that. The whole band looks like Bob Seger. You know, when you pass 50, you just all look like Bob Seger. <laughs> We're going to miniature Bob Seger. Yeah, I'm a short oh, guy. Man. Yeah. man. <laughs> I got and, all uh, short guys in my band, too. And, uh, how, what, how blessed am I to have short guys? But it helps. Otherwise, you look short. <laughs> it, it makes me look tall, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I uh, you know, Graham Pagano. Yeah, I played with him. Uh, right, so me and him were just doing, did a few shows where it's just the two of us. And we had to share a mic one time, just one mic. Oh, that's mic. tough. And so we put it in the middle, and I'd get on my toes and <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Down. <laughs> oh, shoot, he just, yeah, he's tall, man. We, we, we did our best to do an Abbott and Costello type routine. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
He's out doing it too now. He's probably playing, you know, oh, 200 he's, jobs he's, a year. He's playing constantly, yeah, man. Yeah, he's always yeah. playing a lot. I remember when he first landed in town, I think him oh, and yeah. Scotty came yeah. back from GIT, or whatever they were doing out there, and, and uh, there he was, you know, Graham, and it's a... Uh, I played. I played with him for about six months, and he, you know, him and Paul were just like magic together, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, that was a good one there. It was yeah, good time. He, he's a he's an easy fella to uh, work with, writing yeah. songs or whatever. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember any harsh times with that guy. He's just no, nice he's guy. Always nice. I've uh, I I probably jammed with him and Scott more than anybody else. Yeah. It was never like very. We we did gigs a bit, but it was never that. It was always about just getting together and having fun and just making each other yep. laugh and you know. Yeah, having a good time. So play so loud, you don't know what you're doing anyway. Really, you just yeah, right. Can't hear it. I remember some of those. If I play loud enough, they won't right. know I suck. Right. <laughs> I got to get a bigger amp. Is what I need. Right. You remember? Uh, remember old Mike Creekmore? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man, uh, he he. You know, God rest his soul. I hope he rest in peace. But old Mike, uh, uh, he would. We had that a band together, and he's like building fake. Four twelve cabinets, <laughs> and he's got one that works, and he wants to take four of them to it. I'm like, yeah. I'm not carrying that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Wow. Oh, so, so it's so, so ridiculous. I remember he busted. He hit his lighter on something and blew up in his face in the back. Of, me and Stein were going out of town. He was our roadie at the time yeah. when we first oh, yeah. started, and so uh, blew up his face, so burned his hair off and stuff. Yeah. And I thought we were going to have to dump him out and make an excuse. I didn't know, what, <laughs> you know, how bad it was for a minute. And, uh, oh man. <laughs> yeah. For those just tuning in, uh, you're listening to Riverbend Talent brought to you by the Halp Music Company and by Mr. Matt Van Voorst of Macias Insurance. We're talking to Steve Tennant, a.k.a. Bob Seger from uh, <laughs> from Silver Bullet, the uh, Bob Seger tribute band that's playing July 7th and 8th at the uh, Wild E Theater. Only five tickets left for the Friday night show. And we're talking to Tom Swain. Who is trying to work out a deal where it's not going to be Bob Seger, but Bob Seagram's, and he's going to get him sponsored yeah, by yeah, Seagram's. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> going to get some real money, some corporate as, as my hair falls out, I'm thinking Bald Seger. You know, Bald, Bald, Bald Seger. He never used know. to be Billy Bob Seger. Billy Bob, Bob Seger. <laughs> fell out. I had a bad tooth in it, so it used to just fly out. I remember when we hired a new girl one time, they were sitting beside me, and goes my tooth or whatever. And how embarrassing is that anyway? But So she says, are you all right? She didn't know. And right. It's, yeah, I've since got that fixed, you know. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I was in a, a gambling accident. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I lost that tooth in a gambling accident. I've been twenty years. I couldn't eat an apple, you know, <laughs> and I love the damn things. And, uh, right. and now I can tear into an apple. Right. He could eat corn through a fence, though. Oh yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Sideways, Just right. not touch the front. And uh, uh, for those who don't uh, recognize the name Tom Swain, you've been booking bands for longer than gosh, we've been alive, pretty much, the rest of us. 50 years, <laughs> I'll bet you. Has it been 50, 50 years? 50 it's been 50 about years. 45, maybe somewhere around there. I haven't figured it out lately. I think it was the Granny's Rocker era when I met you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would that was say. later on. Yeah, I was going to say, that was <laughs> yeah, that was after I, you know, it had not been like, yeah. working with the Undecided or, and you know. That was uh, a weird little click time back there. You had to be somebody like either his friend or somebody good you know to get a gig and <laughs> right, right, right. yeah it, it wasn't that i was good it was just all my oh I'd, I'd watch him on really his calendar bad. we got we got to be friends i'm out watching him on his calendar at home he's just chucking bands off now because oh, yeah. yeah. they like, won't answer the phone oh, <laughs> that's like, like hey get me a gig i'll make you yeah. feel good Dude, he, had, he, had, he had press kits just boxes of press kits you could pull out anybody and they all had the same amount of hairspray and the same you know, <laughs> right. pretty crazy you couldn't tell if they were men or women back then it was a borderline uh, right I, yeah i just recently put a bunch of i was cleaning out a closet and i put a bunch of old pictures on facebook mm. and oh, nice. a lot of messages about uh, that i mean there's some old <laughs> yeah. ones on there yeah now Way tom back. am i right that your son is is doing some of the same things i've seen another swain i was uh, wondering no 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 okay no i've threatened them all about uh, okay that. that's his fake <laughs> that, that's his other fake account job. he doesn't tell about that's, he's got two accounts i see i see now we're getting done you will not book bands for a living you will be an accountant put that guitar down i, could, I couldn't imagine because you know you take on the stress of every every personality and every band that you have playing for you and especially me you know he's got a he gets me and takes me where i need to go and, 
<laughs> That's a funny thing. I'm never late. It's just because I know you'll be it's there. Routine, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's because you haven't answered the phone in 20 years, I mean, it's, man. It's he, too much. He, he has to go to your house and yeah, pick you, you up. You have it go, rings and rings and rings. you got to so. drive to his house. Cause Ever since my kids moved the out, phone, that's I been, don't know why he has <laughs> They constantly call. They're constantly in a jam. They need something. and Even if it's just uh, words, you know. Right. I'm good with right. words, no doubt. I can just keep babbling until they just hang up on me. If call you me need back. money, you oh, call yeah, the wrong number. wrong guy here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you want to talk, I got endless gab. I got some gab. Yep. No Born doubt. with a gift of gab. Yep. That's a fact. I just talk till they hang up on me. Right. <laughs> I know they're full. Uh, well, you just be happy that they call y'all. The only thing, my yeah. daughter's only 14, and all she says to me is that she's trying to get me in an old folks' home, but the, the, yeah. the crappy ones are all filled up. And yeah. she won't pay for a good one, so. No, you're never going to get that. You might as well just set your mind to that. You don't want to go right. there anyway. I, I know, but she wants to take me there. She's yeah. 14. She's trying to put me in old folks' home. Even the food you use there, I'm telling you, you don't want to go to them places. Oh, man. I'm not ready for none of that yet. You know, well, yeah. up there. No, no, not even close. You me kidding either. me? I haven't grown up yet, and I'm 67. Right, right. So it's going to be oh, a while. Yeah. Well, yeah, she'll tell me I'm the world's oldest juvenile. Then why are you trying to put me in an old folks' home? You can't, you know, it can't be both. When you hit a certain age, it's like you just went under 18 again. You lose all your rights to answer questions. Your kids have got total control. They can stick you with it. He's just a nutty old fruitcake. Take him back there and put him in a chair. Strap him down. Don't let him talk for a couple of days. <laughs> Uh, kind of uh, reminds me of your dad, Carl, who was a he, hell of oh, yeah. a musician. Yeah. You know what? They were they were a different era than us. And all of his brothers and him played, you know, and sing songs and stuff. But, boy, they sure were mean. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> I don't know if it was the booze they drank or what, but they were sure mean, man. If you lived through the Dust Bowl, you were just angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah tell stories about gravel road I bars. and gunpowder or something. Just mean, man. I don't know what. He had nine brothers or eight brothers. They were all kind of the same. Yeah. Mean as, you know, mean as a snake. I remember being over here your house and uh he'd come home before your mom got off and we all started doing chores yeah if he was yeah. in the house he said you had to clean had to get it done you had right? to get the yard work done man that was a lot of work you know it was <laughs> pr- primitive times there was no weed eaters and that weed eater was whatever you get in your hand they knock the weeds down oh yeah I remember pouring oil around the house thinking that would never grow back. And yes. boy, I, got, I got tore up for that one. <laughs> yeah. so I, there's we, nothing you could do. We had a brick driveway that, that j- didn't just go to the house, but went all the way down to the backyard. And it was a never-ending chore to pull the weeds between the yes. bricks. And it was yes. like, my dad knew at any time, if, if you mouth off, you said anything, go pull the weeds out of the exactly, driveway. Yeah. And you couldn't, because by the time you finish, they're growing at the top. Yeah, again. you're never going to get them out of You got to move the brick. <laughs> No, there was hard times because there was no weed eaters and stuff. They had a sickle to go out and chop the weeds at the ditch or whatever. There was some, some folks thing. calls it a Kaiser blade. I got it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I call it a sickle. Yeah, that's that's what there was though. I remember swinging that thing till I was just tired. I finally broke it, thinking I'd get out of work. No, nah. I'm down there with one of these little hand things. Thank God we had a hand clippers we had stole from the neighbor or whatever. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there wasn't there wasn't no stuff like that at our house. It wasn't like that. <laughs> Telephone. You guys have grass? Barely. There was a bunch of there's a bunch of us there, so we tore it all down. But it wasn't much of a yard, really. The one telephone with this mile long cord in it. You got to shut two or three doors, and this cord's all jagged, and you barely can hear anymore. And yeah, good times, man. It yeah. was a simpler time. It was better. I think it was better. I guess that's because I'm old. Yeah. Right. My yeah. kids, my kids wouldn't survive in that dead era. I don't think. So I guess your inspiration was your dad, though, got you into music. Yeah, my uncle. You know, my uncles were the same, and, and they all played. And I watched them play. I got my first bass from him. You know, and. Mm-hmm. and and it was an old P bass, probably worth a fortune now, but it didn't have any <laughs> strings on it or whatever, maybe one string or something. I could just rape, I could rape that one string like nobody's business. And so then I finally worked up to two, and pretty soon I'm playing in a band. And next thing you know, I got all four strings. And yeah. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> he, had a, he had a great voice, and he played more than bass, so didn't he play guitar as well? I'm no, that sure. was my uncle. He was lived across the street okay. from us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was the guy that was like always gone on the road playing jobs or whatever. Truck driver, right? No, that's another uncle. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. My dad had eight or nine brothers. They they could all sing and play, but um, they were just too too mean to make it, you know. And yeah. it's like everywhere they went, they just had probably problems, you know. And it was always had something. The, I hear them had talking. The thin Lizzy thing going, yeah. fighting every town. It, it really was. Yeah, yeah. Right. They they tell the stories, and it, and it's just like unbelievable. It's like how do you guys even how do you get jobs? You know, who would want to book that? And knowing it was going to be this mess at the end of it, and they were all going to be drunk. And I hear the stories and fights and stuff, and it's like, man. You, they tell the stories of the different days of playing with the, the Ike Turner in East St. Louis. I think they used to be a real neighborhood at one time. You yeah. know, it was all tore, tore down. And, and uh, 
they tell the old stories that I used to love to hear them, but then it came time to uh, do the work. And right. then I said, no way, man, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I knew when the last stories were coming, they start stuttering a little bit. I just mosey on around the corner. And, uh, now you boys clean the yard up. <laughs> Now, he passed down the bass to uh, you and uh, your two younger brothers. Ed didn't play, I don't think. No, he didn't play. He was a boxer, long. wasn't he? Yeah. He, he was a guy. A little bit. Kind of like my dad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's something about fighting. I don't understand it. <laughs> I, I never I never really understood any of that. It looked like pretty painful, actually. Either end it looked painful to me. So <laughs> Now, your your mom passed down something even better. You all, yeah. you all can cook. Exactly. And she yeah. was a great cook. I'm not starving to death now, I can tell you that. <laughs> if I don't got nothing but parakeets, I'm not going to starve to death. I'll find some gravy for them somehow. Yeah, yeah kind of gamey, but it ain't You bad. had to cook back then or you just didn't eat. There mm-hmm. wasn't a bunch of box fulls of, of throwing a microwave. We didn't have microwaves. We right. didn't have none of that. So an oven, you just light the oven with five brothers and see what happens. Try to put a pizza in the oven. It's like, no way. You're piled up high fighting over that last uh, yeah <laughs> yeah the times were different back then uh, so yeah. well, we only had uh, one tv and i'm the youngest in the house i didn't yeah. ever get to watch anything i wanted oh, i just no. got to watch what my mom and dad wanted what my older brother and sister wanted he hauled in the dukes of hazard that's oh, what I, I was dukes raising. of hazard was my favorite yeah. man that was <laughs> he all that was something else too i was right. had to watch Three Stooges. Every yeah, day. I, I love and, me and some Stooges, man. When I was little, I didn't like them. When I got to be a teenager, then I yeah. loved them. Yeah. And I couldn't get enough. The Silent Laurel and Hardys. Those are the, yeah. My uncle used to watch those, and he would just laugh, and they're not talking. They're just like doing yeah. what they do, you know, silent movies, and it's, it's, uh, I didn't, I never got that either. Yeah. I, I remember cartoons with you guys. Yeah. Because you guys could, this, I'm not kidding. They could do cartoon covers. <laughs> like yeah. they knew the entire episodes of cartoons. <laughs> I can still quote Cat in the Hat and Green Eggs and Ham too. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. 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 And uh, they and they actually kinda act them out. <laughs> he does that with SpongeBob now for the last yeah. ten years or so. You know what? We used to tie my brother, my youngest brother, Brian, tie him to the tree. And that's a real story. And, and, yeah. go, and play ball across the street because we, we had to watch him and we didn't want to keep up with him. So we literally tied him to the tree days and days. And, and let, we let him off. You know, there was no, it wasn't torture or anything back then. It wasn't considered torture. Right. It so, would be now, but not back like, then. It'd be a bummer now. We'd be in like jail now. Right, right. Yeah. Like we gave him some water, a bowl of water. and yeah. yeah. When, my, when my kids were little and I had a nightclub, Fat Cats, I'd come home and my wife would go to work in the mornings, and Ooh. so I'd take the belts out of the robes and tie them to the ankle of each kid, <laughs> and then tie them to my wrist. Go, go, go to sleep, and if they took off running, I'd know and wake up and reel them back in. Yeah, you done that for all day long. Oh, oh yeah. my God! I, well, sometimes no, I get I was, stuck. <laughs> I wasn't in much shape to get up and yeah. do anything. Right, I'm you saying know? I couldn't imagine staying out all night Fat playing. Fat was kind of a wild place to yeah. say the least. I, I snuck in there a few times. I was a minor at the time, and I snuck in there, and it was looked like a wild place. There was fights there a it few was, times. I saw. I, I don't remember Fat Cats. When was oh, that? It was in 1980. Yeah, it was 1980. Yeah. I remember seeing yeah. Mama's Pride yeah. there. They had all good oh, bands there. They were nice. just, they were It was good. a constant snowstorm. Where, where, where in was that it? Building in Edwardsville. Yeah, okay. There's a quick trip there now. Gotcha. Okay. Right on. It, it was the Greenery before it was Fat Cats, which was a real famous place. Yeah. And then uh, legendary. We got in there with Fat Cats, and it. It got even more legendary <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> right. it, it, it was. You ever man. book anything in uh, Benel at the Coliseum? Uh, no, they were they were already uh, down. Okay. By the time I got or no, wait a minute, I take that back. I put a a Jimi Hendrix uh, tribute band back in the early '80s when there was no tribute bands. This Ooh, guy yeah, was yeah. really great, and I put him up there in Benel. Interesting. He, I got my tooth knocked out there. And fat cats, and I, the guy yeah. was great, but he fell in love every night. So <laughs> I hate after that. he'd fall in love, yeah. he wouldn't show up to the next day's show. You know, it was like, Daryl, you yeah. got to show up. You, it happens you don't understand. Show. This is the one. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> love lied to me again. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's interesting uh, when guys that have been around here for a long time come by and start bringing up these old venues that we remember, but, you know, yeah. it's been a while. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, these guys are younger. One. Yeah. yeah well, I, and and I, I do remember, like, getting into the Coliseum uh, for the, and going, 
oh wow we made it man yeah look yeah. at this there's an upstairs and a downstairs back room <laughs> yeah i felt oh, that way at granny's the first right. time i'm just saying oh, I was yeah. Like, yeah you guys probably had to sneak in there didn't you you were younger well yeah. well so so uh I, I was gonna say because of uh i worked with uh pumper yeah the light guy yeah, yeah because i would by by the time i got my driver's license he put me to work yeah and so wow. if uh if i wasn't working with the undecided i'm not doing a light gig but either way i i'm considered a, i remember the first time i worked at granny's i, I was a kid yeah. and they're like you can't be here i'm like if i leave there's no light show for the band right and they're like well the bylaws says an employee you can stay i'm like that's what i've been saying man yeah. Yeah. now the biden administration would say no but you go on and hang out till we get a change <laughs> Yeah, oh, I remember. Man. I think our drummer at the time was young like that, and we snuck him in because uh, Tom would book this like that. Grandies when Scotty was only seventeen oh, yeah. or eighteen, yeah. maybe. Well, that, so, so uh, that it it all uh, it all kind of started with Scotty, you know, back with a uh, high in high school with Scotty. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was a year. He was about six months older than me, wow. but he was a great uh, great above me. So it was like. Uh, we we were definitely the youngsters yeah. of the crew that were always getting harassed. So yeah, that's true. I'll be there. It's been a long time ago. <laughs> oh, that's a lifetime ago, man. Yeah, uh, th thinking about mattress races, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah every, it, everything just went away like almost all at once. The club scene well, just it, went away, and now it, it's come back, you know. And and, better it, than and before. I, it, it did. It was like uh, uh, through through the. The 80s and, and, and the 90s, uh, the first part of the 90s, there was this, like, club scene with bigger clubs. They were everywhere. And, yeah, and, yeah. and it was great, and live bands were in every joint in town. Good yeah. bands. They were yeah, yeah good there. bands yeah. were everywhere. And then it just one day kind of kind of mm. stopped it seemed like and i'm like is it was a karaoke what happened yeah. i don't drunk even know driving laws. drunk driving the drunk really, driving yeah, laws really they, they a, turn it into prison and yeah, yeah, they put yeah. a real hurt on the club business. yeah yeah and, and i could see that because people used to travel from like at fat cats we had people from st oh, charles yeah. winsville places sure. like they're driving all the way to edwardsville oh yeah now everybody's and, too scared and then yeah. people from here drive over to animal house and then yeah. you know because oh, you yeah. wanted to go to stage wherever that whatever club it was right promoting the show that you wanted to go mm. see that night yeah i think and, they could have just gave them all the real they're a lane this is the drunk people lane there's a yeah. wall up there <laughs> you know stay yeah. in your lane and you're fine <laughs> my, my uh, brother-in-law has got a theory that uh he, he works in an er so he sees all these drunk driving accidents right he, he's like, you know, we need people to get to work, so maybe after the first DUI, you just get a moped license. Right. Who, who are you going to hurt? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're going to kill yourself, for right. sure. <laughs> but who else are you going to hurt, man? <laughs> I like I like your idea, just the drunk driving. Yeah, lane, I mean, you know? McKinley Bridge used to have the lane that split off to the right. <laughs> right. That's all they need is a drunk lane <laughs> like that for them to get home. <laughs> expand that lane i mean geez that's all we need yeah, I, you know if you put this to a vote i bet a lot of taxpayers are going to yeah, vote for this they'd want it yeah why not yeah. then they then they'd go out and have a good time and just stay in the right lane and you go home yeah. well i bet that lane gets sore tore up though well, you know on a saturday and, and, and that it, it, it is true uh that you know like like a lot of nights you know i mean it, i would like to go downtown and see a band or go mm -hmm. do something but I can also walk through a door, call a few friends, walk through a door, and we can just yeah. play music, and nobody's at risk. Well, uh, think, far out ways, yeah. I think that's a big deal with festivals. You can go take your camping gear. Yeah, yeah. You don't have people in your house puking. They're yeah, puking I mean, out. And, in the, and, yeah. and for and, 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 that's and a good thing. As, yeah. a, as the guy who in in my group and, and and everything, I'm usually the driver a lot of times. So I love the three and four day festivals because now yeah. I yeah. don't have to drive. For, right. I, I get to just kind of go ah hey, whatever for four days. You know, yeah, not being at your house. That's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Setting yeah. tents at these three day shows and stuff. Yeah. He rents tents at these big concerts. Oh, really? The no. Saturday. Saturday I mean, he's keeping really busy. I was oh, surprised I there was so much call for it. There's yeah. festivals every yeah. weekend. All there was like six the of those tents they had for each band Saturday where we yeah. play that. And uh, nice. it's really neat. I kind of looked at it like, Arr. and I got up in there and it's pretty neat. You know, I mean, yeah. it was just like a building pretty much. And that was uh, surprising to see that. You know, that's like, what are they going to do with all these tents? And sure enough, you know, it wasn't so bad. Goes, you'll see some funny stuff there. I lived yeah. in a porta potty for the first five years we played. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they expanded me out to a tent. I was like, oh, heaven, then. You keep all my money, balls. Just give me this tent. Uh, what is that? What's yeah. that smell? Right. That's air, boy. I keep, Without the methane. I keep seeing people go in there. <laughs> Talking tonight with uh, Steve Tennant 
from the Silver Bullet Band, also uh, formerly of the Undecided. And a lot of people yeah, remember yeah. you from that and Tom Swain, Tom. who booked the Undecided since Reluctantly. their beginning. Yeah, book, and everybody else. I was gonna say town. booked everybody else. <laughs> I guarantee that when that, in the days I'm talking about, I watched his calendar. If you didn't, if you didn't butter up one way or the other, you were not going to play these these elite places. There <laughs> yeah. were stages and grannies and grannies and yeah. you know, I can't I can tell you all of them, but they were all his pops. There was uh, a time when you couldn't go there. Yeah. And, did you uh, did you book Animal House over there too? Uh, I, I did a, a couple, yeah, but, that, but they were winding down, yeah. and I was mostly doing the bars and not, right. not any underage clubs. Yeah. You didn't do Mississippi River Festival. You didn't go that far. Uh, no, I was there. <laughs> you but were there. I, I was, was going to say, nobody booked it. They just showed up there. Yeah, right. I was definitely there. Uh, wow. I wanted to check that book that, out. That was one of the coolest parties ever was on the way to see The Who. The traffic was backed up all the way from, like, Riverview and 270. Everyone was sitting on their cars and partying. Yeah. Wow. And joints and bottles of wine and stuff. Right. and. It was it was amazing time Ooh. time you got there you could hardly see. <laughs> I remember trying to go to Six Flags though. with my friend. Is that's too far? I'm already drunk and I got to come home halfway. You know, and yeah. we never made it to Six Flags. I can tell you that. I should have put it in St. Charles or something. That's about as far as I made it. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen some good shows at Six Flags. Yeah. Though. Me too. Yeah, some they man. used to yeah. they used to do good shows there, and yeah. it was funny because they used to. You had to be in the union to play there. Okay. Mm. So yeah. I signed up more musicians to the union <laughs> in Collinsville when I was working for Heisler yeah. Productions. They didn't we, have a we, choice. We, you know, you wanted to play Six Flags. You, yeah, you yeah. got to join the union. I should have been getting a kickback on that. Yeah. I, I, I uh, would go, like, if I was over there, I'm going to see the band. I don't care if I like, if I heard of them, if I like them, I'm going to go see who it is. And, yeah. and uh, there were some, like, a, you know, I was a teenager. I remember, like, night ranger being there i'm like oh, i'm rolling my eyes going yeah. it's night ranger right and then the drummer starts singing i'm like all right <laughs> oh that's night ranger <laughs> you guys got me no, uh, the, I, I remember seeing like the temptations there though and they blew my mom all like, right one I, of the best concerts i, I did I not expect them to be that good was the temptations and the four tops <laughs> yeah. at the fox theater it was incredible those bands are tight oh, those yeah. bands God, are tight those brothers could dance the I steps do. right the oh, steps they have are just they had all nine of them out on stage together at once yeah. doing a couple songs. I can barely walk and in and get a drink of water. A friend of mine was doing monitors, so I'm on the side of the stage acting like I'm dancing with him. <laughs> I had a friend take a picture from the side, <laughs> so it looked like I was yeah. in line yeah. with him. <laughs> I'm sure you were right there with him, too. Oh, yeah. He was in step. I'd like to see yeah. those pictures. <laughs> it was a hell of a show, though. It was one yeah. of the best shows I've good. ever seen. Yeah, I bet they were good to see. Speaking of good shows, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, uh, we, we, say, we should, uh, we should uh, figure out what's happening on Friday evening in the River Bend area here. Yeah, let uh, Steve and Tom Swain uh, know that uh, each week we brag about our uh, music scene around here. And, and quite honestly, when uh, Pigpen and I started, we had a small list. But uh, as we started exploring, we found out there was way more places to play than uh, in then we realized and uh, we kind of realized that you're in your own little circle as a band you know yeah. the places you play but you don't know the other places right. right and people always ask you know that guy from that band no right. not really i'm playing every night that he's playing yeah. you know i've heard you guys talk about him but right and so uh, it's been interesting for us yep. to like look at the big picture yeah, there's and, a lot uh, going on in this little city. You know, yeah, well, and, and, and we try to keep it on this side of the river, unless, yeah. unless one of our bands is across the river or something. Right, right. And, especially and go an from, original band. Right, yeah. right. And then we go from yeah. what about Grafton all the way down to Belleville, really. So. Yeah, and Belleville's just kind of thrown in it's there thrown because in of that experience of the, yeah, live music right, grow, right, which is right. Right. unbelievable. The, all yeah. the bars have got together down there, yep. and they promote <clears> it as one thing. Um, and experience yeah. to come down and check out all the venues yep. in their That's little a smart area. Thing too. They've that got a, 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 pro, uh, a, a sponsor and everything. So yeah. working together instead of trying to shut each other down probably it, works. Well, better and, for them. and and you can appreciate the work it would be to book Wednesday, what is it, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday Friday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, every week, five or six different venues. And you stagger the times so people can see, you know what I mean? That, oh, yeah. To do that, that's a lot of booking. Mm. The landing that, used to have quite a few places going yeah. at once. I yeah. used to have an office down there, and boy, that was a mistake. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy's, man. That, I've seen some good shows down. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, Mississippi Nights is the it was yeah. the pinnacle. Yeah. But Kennedy's I was upstairs for first, first Rock. Rock. Yeah, I remember First Rock. John Green. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> my, my office was upstairs from there, and oh my god, we ended up being open more at night than we were in the daytime. <laughs> sure, uh, the the All American Saloon. Yeah, uh, right. so I saw Pat Travers get carried almost yeah. out of that place with a, by two girls had a girl <laughs> under each arm he walked yeah. in with a girl under each arm all smiling they kind of like helped him out <laughs> i can't wait to get to that level <laughs> yeah, yeah. i just want to be held <laughs> i've seen eddie money the same way yeah oh yeah. he yeah. was he played at pops one time and he goes over to the strip club I well first he, he went to the ball game first and he got really drunk at the ball game they oh, came wow. back and he. Oh, I got to go to the strip club. He went in the strip hey, clubs as Eddie never Money. Never got him out of there to get him over to Pops to play. He was, <laughs> he was just out wow. of his mind. Yeah. He went in as Eddie him. Money and came out as Eddie No Money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure he had none when he left. Right, right. a bunch of IOUs and stuff. Don't worry, I'm Eddie the Money. <laughs> <laughs> Going around uh, town this uh, weekend, Friday night, it's uh, four of uh, our past guests all in one place for Coolaverse Culture <laughs> Night, which is a super cool art event and music event that they do at the conservatory once a month. Uh, Mr. Michael Snyder, outstanding artist, but uh, Jenna Muscarella going to oh, be yeah. uh, the featured artist. Muscarella. And then Steph Plant so plays mind. almost every week, or every Coolaverse night, 6 p.m. Lofty's Comet, though, the 10 o'clock uh, entertainment at the Conservatory on Friday night. There you go, man. Uh, oh, <clears throat> also happening uh, on Friday night, we got Nate Sickmeyer and Company, 2 to 5, at Fast Eddie's Bone Air. And then after that, cross the line, 7.30 to 11.30. Porch Cafe out at Baker's and Hale and Godfrey. And Just Jethro out at Locks Brick House in Bethalto from 8 until 11. Jesus Jones is playing the uh, Wild E Theater this weekend. They got canceled. Did it? Oh, okay. Yeah, the, uh, they didn't get their passports. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> you would think they would plan ahead for that. Jesus they, needs a passport? I yeah, Jesus needs a passport and he ain't got one. <laughs> Maybe I should try to join that band. <laughs> what do you mean driver's license? Jesus needs a passport. Right across the parking lot, though, the Melodies will be playing uh, at the back bar at 9 o'clock on Friday night. Mo Pleasure at Big Daddy's around the corner from that, 6 to 9. And uh, somebody will be playing at the Stagger Inn for happy hour. Riley Holtz, 7 to 10 at 1818 Chop House in Edwardsville. The Midlife Duo out the cabin at Judy Creek from 7 to 10. Down and Dirty, getting it down. 9 o'clock at Patty McDee's in Granite City. Scott and Michelle at Pavia's Place in Granite City on Friday night. Save this one for you, Pigpen. You know you love introducing the drag queens. Oh, I didn't see this one coming. Yeah. Mariah Dude, Candy's tell. Summer Fun Drag Show with Kitty Litter. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's right. that's, that's an attractive <laughs> name. <laughs> you think of Kitty. Okay, that sounds like some drag show lingo. And Litter, who? I got a picture in my mind that ain't what you probably got on that it, paper. It, 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 it scratch and sniff. Kitty Litter, yeah, right. <laughs> it's the old scratch and sniff. Yeah. All right. Wow. Uh, 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 <laughs> Alexis Principal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's going to be hard to beat the kitty that her name is. Yeah, yeah I think she's oh. Got it. <laughs> oh, man. She's going to do it for sure. <laughs> I think I'm going. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna meet her. Oh my gosh, that is like they they have some funny names on the drag shows, but that has uh, definitely tickled me. Uh, what else One we more. got? Uh, 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 Tionia Maserati Steel. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so there you go. That's all at 9 p.m. at Tegan's in Granite City, a, uh, the Summer Fun Drag Show. Down at the Old Herald Brewery, Rockology from 6.30 to 9.30. Scott and Carl up at the loading dock from 6 to 9. Big Japan, as opposed to Little Japan. They'll be playing uh, <laughs> 7 to 11 at Crafton Pub. <laughs> Uh, Jim Bergman will be at the uh, Bloody Bucket up there in, in Grafton from 7 to 10. Soulshine Groove out the uh, Prairie Inn in Dorsey where you have to bring your golf court to uh, check out. You don't have to. But <laughs> a lot of people do. Diana Highlander from 7 to 10 at the Rustic in Warden. And there's the Experience Live Music Row once again. Hat Trick up at uh, Martin's Lanes in Root House on Friday night. How about the Crip 
Kickers, 6 p.m. at Calhoun County Music in the Park in Hardin, and I guarantee you Steve Tennant's got some Hardin stories. (laughs) (laughs) You have to turn the mic off to get the truth out of me on some of that stuff. Big Al. Steve Tennant stories, Uh, too. I was was just down there. We were just running sound at a festival in Campsville, and I had to uh, go into Hardin to get gas for the... uh, generators and i'm looking at the old big owls building and yeah oh the memories just flood back yeah it's my roof that's all i know (laughs) one more on friday night our friends lazy lester playing c joe's last stop saloon and mount olive on friday there you go then you kick it off with breakfast on saturday breakfast and blues with tbd not sure 10 a.m at tabs cafe in alton how about that blues and breakfast yeah they've been doing that uh for a month yeah. or so now yeah. so music at 10 well, a.m yeah. what, what about the the 10 pin i didn't hear nothing about them they still got mondon uh, a few yeah. days no, a week no i don't think they have mondon uh they're they're not very good at letting us or letting anybody know who's playing down there you just gotta oh, yeah. show up and see what happens down there. i mean really i, I think <clears throat> um i think mondine is playing with sular blues, blues band, band yep. and, and that's mm. kind of all he's got going on right now. Mm-hmm. i think i i would i haven't asked him i mean he was there like longer than the owner you yeah know? i mean he was yeah. there playing it and they're always yeah. good you know i mean Back, oh, you uh, kidding me that guy should always Heck good man. but it was uh the thing that happened that shut everything down yeah we don't like to bring that up because it might happen again you know we just Burn forget that you know drop yeah. it zoroasterism or whatever i got good rumors if you want to hear them <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah uh leading up to that we'd just say hey if you really want to experience alton you have to go to 10 pin on sunday night yeah yeah and, and see uh the mondon band oh yeah. man i mean i'm serious about 20 years he's been here I mean, yeah since i was young Tuesdays and Thursdays and every Saturday yeah. that, that he could uh, be off or whatever. And he definitely a brick in the wall there for sure. Jumping yeah. Johnny with his new act uh, going to be down at the Lodge at Lovejoy on Saturday. Psychedelic Symphony from nice. 7 until 10. Let's see. The Bearded Bandits, 2 to 6 and cross the line at Fast Eddie's on Saturday. Where's Dave? Dave's not here. Dave's not here. <laughs> he doesn't live here. He's going <laughs> to be at Baker's and Hale. That's <laughs> That's where uh, Where's Dave's going to be on Saturday night. They got the audio distilled out there at uh, Blue Stem Vodka in Meadowbrook, 4 to 7. Sit down, get down, 9 o'clock at the Pump House in Wood River. Uh, the scruffy-looking nerve herder <laughs> from 2 to 6 at Sparky's in South Roxanne on Saturday. There's the Soulard Blues Band. They'll be playing Mr. Mondine from 4 yep. to 7 at the Loading Dock in Grafton. That's a fun place to play. Oh, yeah. Under, uh, Andrew Dolly, 3 to 7, at Grafton Winery on Saturday. First things first at the Vineyards at Grafton Winery from 2 to 5. The Fry Project from 2 to 6, and Cabin Fever from 7 to 11 at Grafton Pub. Carl Mager, 1 to 5, at Aries Resort in Grafton on Saturday. Backwoods oh, Burden from 7 to 11 at uh, the Oyster Bar in Grafton. And Dave Cantini kicking off the goshen market at 9 a.m in edwardsville on saturday that's just Ooh, one that's page a, that's an early <laughs> early gig 9 a.m but it's not as early as wigglers wigglers yeah. no, no, no no that's, that's 8 p.m uh, i thought it was 8 a.m for oh. a minute i was getting ready to say why are they doing it 8 a.m uh, <laughs> it's there, just my blurry eyes yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, remember, I remember doing a seven in the morning I had, to get, I had to get there at five just to play a song or whatever it's a yeah, Channel 2 News or whatever it was and, and uh, we're over there and I'm thinking man this is yeah. not going to go well you know we just got to bed about an hour ago and <laughs> so yeah. it didn't go well just like I thought <laughs> right right was yeah. that was that the undecided yeah we yeah. went there just totally off our uh, wow. Yeah, off balance yeah, I, completely. I would never send anyone there. Oh my God! <laughs> I played a big old bass yeah. note as soon as I turned it on, and all the awards fell and broke in the floor. And thank God they were, I guess, uh, relics or whatever they had, and, and they were all broke up. And you I'm thinking, broke my local uh, Emmy. I'm thinking prison. You know, I'm like, what the hell's going on here now? I'm thinking prison, you know, or something. And they were fake awards or whatever, but. <laughs> I mean, they were plastic. They probably had real ones. They weren't going to let me throw them on the wall, throw them on the floor, though. I wouldn't think. You know, you brought up you brought up cord, and a memory struck my mind. Yeah, I remember sitting around with you. You were learning how to play songs, and you'd just play along with the radio. That's all I could do. Yeah. And you'd go, "That's Bob. That's in Bob right there." Yeah. And we'd be like, "What are you talking about?" To me, that's Bob. I had to name that's them what, different chords. <laughs> 
He had his own name for all the chords. Bob Jr. was a minor chord, of course. I could never make them very well. So I still struggle with I, them. I call this one Bear Claw. If you watch me close from this, till this day, I'll be thinking, Bob oh, Jim. I can't share it with the guys that I play with because they're all much more professional than, than, what, than what that theory comes from, really. Yeah. And, you know, you guys were so entertaining just as brothers being goofy with your Looney Tunes and everything. Mm-hmm. I always thought he was kidding, but he was serious. He oh, was no, he was really serious, <laughs> yeah. But most of the things that uh, Steve has this great ability uh, to tell you a story, and if you don't know him, you're going to take it at face. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's got a way of telling a good story, but once you know Steve, It gets too deep, doesn't it? <laughs> you realize. He ain't never I, told the I, truth. I, well, I, I, I would I would gander thinking back at the days of like just hanging out at your house up, up there across from the park and stuff uh didn't think about it much then but now i look at it like oh you're 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 probably like me a lot of those stories had little grains of truth in them that's what helps sell them but but the rest of it's just for entertainment purposes (laughs) you can can tell it however you want it depending on what radio station i guess or if you can rate it x or whatever it is yeah yeah, some crazy stuff we played nintendo till 10 in the morning you know from Mm. a job I don't know how I kept a wife so long, I guess. She just, if they would show up to the job. We told her her food tasted good, and she just stayed around. She, right. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, RBI. So, yeah. Speaking of storytelling, uh, Bob Seeger's a pretty good storyteller. and uh, yeah, He gets paid every time he tells it. He opens his mouth, and a song comes out, and it turns into a hit. And, and hopefully you're getting paid sick. to play his music this uh, two weeks from now, yep. July you know 7th and it's 8th, up. and uh, only tickets for uh, the Friday night show available, right? Yeah, I think this for a Saturday sold out, and there's five single to seats left for uh, Friday. I'll so, buy them myself if someone doesn't get them. I'm taking them bragging rights and selling out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to have them. <laughs> right. So uh, I heard a story about how that all got started. Was it a St. Louis Blue- Blues hockey player that signed you to uh, like a Florida show or something at one point to do Bob oh, Seeger? Was that gosh, is that a true Tom, story? I remember this story. <laughs> See, this is one of them ones you're going to yeah. get the sprinkles of truth about. Right, yeah, I so, am good with it. My well, version is, yeah, it's a great when story. When this thing started, he didn't want to do it. None of the band wanted to do it. I didn't even know them. They were all like, no, nah, I don't think that's going to work. Right. And so I, t- I finally talked the, the band, and I said, learn six songs. Hmm. And I'll bring Steve out to it was Salvatore's. Salvatore's. Out and, in yep. St. Charles. And uh, he got up and sang six songs with them, and afterwards they were like, yeah, maybe we will do this. You, th- you think he'll change clothes and right. stop cussing? No, no, no. If you get him to do that, we'll play with him. I've known him a long time, and he very yeah. rarely does either one of those. When I start mumbling, you don't want to hear what it is anyway. <laughs> Nine out of ten times, you just don't want to hear it. So The story I heard, it was a blues hockey player wanted you to play something down in Florida. What was the deal with that? And they paid for hotels and everything, because at first you're like, uh, we can't afford to go down to Florida and play. <laughs> Tommy would have had to book that, whatever it was. You know what he's because we did go down there once, but it wasn't. It wasn't that, another story. Was there was a hockey player in town or something that okay. St. Charles had a club or something? Okay, like, maybe and, I got the wrong. Team. Okay, so if that's the case, then yeah, Tom booked us down there, and we I missed the plane. We all missed the plane <laughs> on the way down there. Here we <laughs> was. Great. Swear to God, we had all these people. I'd never flown much, you know. I had smart people around me though, and the plane. I swear, I was looking at the door at the gate, thinking, well, that's that can't be right because all these guys are smart. They're not gonna let that happen. The plane flies off nobody on it but our sax player and uh, yeah it was a long day right there we had, <laughs> it was a longer day for me i had to call tom lewis is like you're gonna call tom somebody's gonna call tom <laughs> i had had a kidney stone operation yeah. i don't know yeah. if you've ever had that before yeah. but they put a stint in oh it my afterwards. yeah tom was down yeah and the bad part is you've got to go back and get it taken out ah! well the day i'm Coach in there gentle. to get it taken out my phone is blown up. <laughs> oh, this, boy. this agent from Florida, she's just screaming her head off. Where's the band? <laughs> yeah. Just going nuts. And yeah. and while all this is going on, there's a guy walks through the door. Looked like he had gear to go spelunking or something yeah. over his shoulder. Well, he was going to retrieve that stint. And there's oh, only oh, one my. way to get in there. Uh, the front door. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I was going through that while my phone's just going completely nuts with yeah. this lady, and I'm trying to talk to her while this doctor's doing that to me. Yeah, no, oh. you know what? That they call can wait for just oh, a minute. Man. Man. We, we got to this job in Florida like 30 minutes before a showtime. This lady's just literally walking in circles, you know, mad. <laughs> sure. So we got a quick sound check, and she was okay. We you know and it was a good show. You know, people came and like they like they expected and stayed. But I bet it was a rough, rough, rough waters for her, Tom and her. Oh. 
<laughs> that, yeah, Go that on. day. People sure. behind the scenes, you don't. They do all the work. They, honestly, I don't do anything except show up and sing songs, and, and they never get any recognition for it. I keep saying to myself, I'm going to have to say something. You know, like introduce the band or whatever. I got to say something about the agents, and I always forget. <laughs> Tom's like my buddy; he's not the agent. So when I see him, it's like he's like the teacher almost. I got to say, oh shit, spit that gum out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> here he comes. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's something we talk about every week that, uh, you know, the band just uh, rehearsing and getting things uh, ready for a show is enough work. But uh, the bands that have support around them doing that extra work is is a big part of the, the success difference. from the bands. It's and uh, that's what we're trying to do is, you know, take some of that promotion uh and and do it for these bands yeah. and that's why we do this long list of who's playing where every uh weekend while we uh interview fun people who've been out yeah. there and experienced it and uh, hopefully some of the younger guys can listen in and, and get a clue because yeah. there's no guidance when yeah. we were out there you know what i seems- wish radio stations would do what your guys are doing i used to do it years ago on a station was uh, KSLQ. I remember, I remember that. On yeah. Fridays, Kevin McCarthy used to do a thing where he would he would call me up on the phone and I'd answer the phone and act like I was hungover, which I usually was. <laughs> yeah. So there wasn't a whole lot of acting. I would act. <laughs> yeah. Acting like I'd I was sober. <laughs> like I'm just waking up. and. Uh, I didn't and think then, you were an actor. <laughs> I, would, I would tell everybody who was playing where in St. Louis and it was really cool because people People and, love to hear that every yeah. week. They, you know, and I go through the whole like list of everybody I had booked. And this this town has so much talent, you know, and it's kind of watered down to the tune of if they if they concentrated about fifty bands into twenty five bands, they could go and do what they want to do, you know. Instead of chasing after that thing, you'd have people chasing maybe to get you to get in the venue or whatever. And mm-hmm. I see great bands, and there's usually at least one or two good, really good guys, exceptionally good. If if, me, if Tom could sit here, of course, and sit here and say, well. Break all these up and just I'm going to put these bands together. Right, give, give me this guy and this guy yeah. and this guy. It's the right thing yeah. to do. I mean, yeah. if you want to go play somewhere besides where you book yourself, I, I I can tell you the young kids in this town, they're like 20s and, yeah. and, and yeah. early 30s. They're all uh, incestuous would be the word where they got yeah. there's there's 20, 20 guys and there's 30 bands and they're all in all. I mean, yeah. you know. One day they're in this band, one day they're in that. Yeah, I mean, they're just yeah. jamming with everybody to try and find mm. yeah. that combination. That, that combination. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of original music, which is the hardest to promote, the hardest to get people to come out and see, right. the hardest to get people to listen to your music. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah, so we try so, to put them at the top I'm, of our list. So, I'm glad yeah. you brought that up. I'm <laughs> trying to get a thing going with original music. I got a show coming up with Dan Liston. Yeah. And. Uh, after that one successful, I'm going to try to start doing some other shows, you know, like one month do a metal band and the next month of mm-hmm. something else, you know, yeah. but get original music out there. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to have to talk and get Danny in here in the next couple of weeks to, yeah. to help promote yeah. Tom, that. Tom's put the safeguard there. He's got Danny. He's not going to screw that one up, you know. Yeah, right? so, I know. That's, yeah. That one will make me He says the governor out there. <laughs> and and uh, I... I love me some Danny Liston, man. Yeah, he's he's a, a suit, guy. sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. Writes great songs, man. Can yeah. I call you a cab? Can I help you? Back, back? <laughs> yeah. Have you heard the new? He's album? got new stuff that's good. I heard oh, pieces man. of it. Oh, it's awesome. Nice. The whole thing is yeah. really good. Cool. And, and he can cook. And, and play the guitar right without <laughs> doinking chords. I doink more chords. You have no idea the chords that they got to cover me up for. Once again, so, a sound man that gets no no recognition. So do you you use in ear monitors? No, I, I don't use any. I, I'm going to tell you what, man. <laughs> he doesn't even play you, chords. I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I mean for for singing. No, I don't use any monitors. No, I just turn this monitor off. I don't want to hear him. You, just don't, you know what? I don't think uh, I don't think it sounds good. So. I get nervous about it almost, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so if they turn it off and I just hear the mains, it's like, well, that sounds a little like Bob Seger. Let's just dig it a little deeper. And I'm with you. Next thing you know, you're doing a song, you <laughs> well, know. I mean, uh, well, and, and that's the thing. You put those in ears and you hear everything you do. Yeah. Every little oh, mistake. I stand every, I'd, be, I'd be peeping. You know, Slobbering. You can hear it. <laughs> oh, it, but it may, it, it's, it's made me play really lightly. Try not even to You're right. right. I, I, you know. <laughs> oh, imagine burping and stuff. And it's hearing your neighbor burp on the guitar next to you or whatever. Oh, dude, yeah. That yeah. can turn into a bad night. For My sure. guys, I think they all just got in here and i just can't do them i don't i don't want to hear stuff it seems to me like if you, and you know what comes out mean you have to do it right it comes out wrong but it's it's right for me you know i mean no, i played with donnie for so long and and you know we just didn't have monitors yeah, you know yeah. and uh hey it worked for bob singer forever I mean, <laughs> so i just do what i do and i'd rather yeah. not have any monitor at all i right. do my best nights with no monitors and 
just this last show, there was none for the girls, you know, two girls in the back. I'm like, no, they got to have monitors. Just take these things. And the guy stopped for a minute to see if I was getting ready to give him the punchline. It's like, no, I really don't want them. I didn't want them. I, I played the whole show without them. And the guys next to me all got monitors. I hear them just fine. You know, right. I think it's a little overrated. That's the singer kind of overrated thing. Well, there. I would promote your shows on July 7th and 8th, but you just sold them out yourself <laughs> yeah. right here. On- <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> If there are five tickets that still exist, I'm just going to buy them, I swear. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, somebody out there, save poor Steve some money and buy right. those tickets, yeah. man. They're almost we'll get free. We'll you put together in a group. Yep. You they're, should have They're a kind of somewhere. scattered, so. Yeah. But the, the Wild is pretty good about trying to get people to, if yeah, they want we're, we're, tickets, work to get. Bring your yeah, wife, yeah, you go yeah, up, yeah. and she'll go down to the next balcony and yeah. just meet her after the yeah. show. You know what? I, I, I just did that in... Uh, I guess it was over in St. Louis where the day before uh, we went to see me and my wife went to see Billy Strings uh, for the 115th time or whatever. That. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, she's the, the day before the show. She's like, "Ooh, a floor seat just came up. I want to buy it. You can have one of some one of your other friends sit with you." Right. <laughs> and, oh, no kidding! Oh, we do it all yeah. the time, man. Where we'll go to shows and it's like, well, if one of us can, you know gets a better seat than others, whatever. Because yeah. we're there, you know, like it's cool. And we're, yeah. you're, you're there to hear the music and we yeah. party between whatever. At least you're not shocked when she dumps you. You know. What I mean? do. <laughs> Cool. I, the the second all, all my friends are like oh man every time she has you go get beer you just run across the street and get her beer I'm like uh-huh. if she sobers up right. she's gonna leave me you, you don't want her sober that's no. for sure yeah. she she's gonna realize what a mistake she's wake made. up and say what was your name pig pen yeah. <laughs> I've wasted almost twenty five yeah. years of my life <laughs> yeah, I know you've been in this thing for a long time wow. I, I've been married to her for. 23 years. Is there no exit like door, or are you just having a good time? I, having a good time, and she just doesn't, like, I think she's too busy to realize how messed up I am or something. <laughs> I, 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 w- I wouldn't let her get glasses, and I wouldn't let her think for herself. I, I, she got glasses. I thought that was going to be the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she got, yeah, she got cataracts, and, and, and or removed, and then got glasses, oh. and and uh, and I'm like, she's going to realize this is all wrong. And, and, yeah. and, and I think she was, again, I think she's so busy that she just doesn't have time to really pay attention to how messed up I am. The know? big man ring around the shower, yeah. that's what gets me in trouble. You know, I said, my wife, I was she sees really good. 33 years. It took three wives to do it. <laughs> yeah. 33 well, years. Yeah. See, I'm still on my starter marriage. <laughs> I'm so, done. Uh, I'm, I'm over my legal I, limit. Now. I'm on my starter yeah. marriage. I don't know how long it's going to last. But I'm, on, I'm on my second hand. <laughs> I can tell you that. I'm running out of fingers, that's for sure. So, uh, uh, Tom, do you uh, go out and recruit bands still? Or yeah. are, are bands, uh, would you want bands to contact oh, you? Yeah. I mean, is that something that's you a good do? Idea, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, if they don't mind being unwatered, because Tom will be like, this band, this band, they'll tear them all up. <laughs> but he'll come out with a good band. Someone will just have the <laughs> consolation prize. You I'll know? tell you what we'll do. We'll uh, go through some of these. Uh, bands here real quick and uh, when we get through some of them grab your pencils guys if you're interested in getting booked by Tom Swain and he'll give you some information here so uh, let's go ahead and finish up with Saturday My, uh, Mike Sonderegger at the cabin at Gre- Judy Creek from 7 to 10 Red Line at Patrick's in Granite City from 8 30 to 12 30 Classic Crush 8 o'clock at Tegan's Pub in Granite City you ever book Rock Bottom Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> who has it? Well, yeah, they're going to be uh, and uh, Shotgun <laughs> Creek, <laughs> right? That's one that yeah. I work yeah. with too. They're a great band. Rock Bottom's going to be at Doyd's Village Inn on Saturday night. Bad Habit at uh, Old Herald uh, in Collinsville. They got the Experience Live Music Row going on. Uh, down in Belleville, Hooky going to be up at Wild Pickens in Chesterfield on Saturday, and. Uh, that wraps up pretty much Saturday. If you want to find out more, uh, we got all the gigs listed at cottonmouth.org. I do want to go over a few uh, for Saturday or for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Some of the highlights there, uh, especially uh, locally, they got Jade Horton out at uh, Baker's and Hale in Godfrey on Sunday. And the open mic will be hosted by Jimmy Strickland down at Martin's Tunes and Eats in uh, Wood River on Sunday. Let's see, uh, Rockabilly Revival up there at Grafton Winery, Denver Way Trent at Aries, Trilogy at the Loading Dock, and uh, Toxic Johnny at Oyster Bar in uh, Grafton, Midwest Avenue at the Grafton Pub all on Sunday, and City Heat will be way out at Wild Pickens. Number four combo going farther out. They're going to be up in Hillsboro from 12 to 4 at the Abbey on Broad. And uh, let's see, Hooky and Lady Luck are playing July 3rd for the 8th Annual July 3rd Party at Bluff City Grill on Monday. So, and then Mike Mattingly, 
no relation to Don, I don't think, six to nine <laughs> uh, at the Flock uh, food truck in Alton. So, and then they'll have the New Horizon band out at Fosterberg Music in the park on Monday. So, there you go. Dude, that's a, that's a busy music scene right there. It is, you know? and I skipped yeah. a lot of it. I was going to say, right. you were you were kind of skipping I mean, there's so there. many bands, so many people, man. If you could concentrate the bands this, a little bit. And, this is uh, just the weekends full of gigs, and it's just wow. pages upon see, pages. I, I never heard some of the names. Awesome. That I, yeah. I guarantee yeah. I know who some of the people are in them. And it just, oh, yeah. uh, what we see well, is life that goes on. you've got your, your cover band, and then one of those guys plays solo yeah. at wineries right. on Sundays or that's something true. like that, yeah, so he true. can... I mean, you've made Boy. your living off of music, right? Yeah. Mainly. If I could play a B chord, there's no telling where I could go. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a Bob chord? Yeah, a that's Bob. what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, seen, I really did have names like that. I've seen him play shanty, and, and smoke would come out of the harmonica. <laughs> oh yeah, that was all an act. I got to tell you, that was a fog machine. <laughs> Speaking of fog machines, I remember playing at Granny's when I was younger, and and uh, the light shows were just coming around. Guy had a fog machine. It was a skillet. And I played barefooted there for a while, and so I remember stepping in that hot skillet for that fog just leaving the Ooh. stage or whatever. And that, that broke me from a lot of bad habits right there. I, I sobered up, and I, I quit walking around bare feet. With so, this, so like a hot skillet with dry ice yeah, on it? Yeah, I don't know what it was. It, no, dry, it was dry. boiling hot. Whatever it was, it was hot. But, but, he would turn it yeah. up, and it would just and the skillet wow. would melt the juice somehow. And They were probably pouring oil. There was no, there was no yeah. EPA at it that place. They were doing what we wanted right. to do. Sure, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, it's like the old flash pots. Yeah, I had one of them blow up real close to me. Yeah, spray yeah. full of gunpowder. Oh wait, we we uh, the the first time I learned to make them, we took a full metal, the old metal Folger can, cut them <laughs> about that top, you know, cut them down to about that high, and put a hole in the bottom, and just put a extension cord stripped out with yeah. flash powder on it. Yeah, yeah. and then you just plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what happens. Think, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't know if this is safe, but it looked cool. <laughs> right, it wasn't safe. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. We were doing the same thing at the White Snake concert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, uh, we we're going to tell people how they could get a hold of you, Tom. Uh, they can go on uh, swainproductions.com. Okay. Swainproductions.com. The, yeah, I actually have a website now. Wow. wow. Big time. Wow. That's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Hit the contact I, button. And go yeah, and there. it's got phone numbers and all that on there. and. There's a woman that works with me that's a lot better than me. Okay. Much prettier than Tom. <laughs> she looks a lot better than me. Prettier, so. nicer. Uh, she looks like Bob Seger, too. <laughs> she still has to hang on to Tom's experience and what's going on, but she's much prettier. Easy to work, I guarantee you. <laughs> easy to remember, though. Swainproductions.com. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's good. Everyone's got a dot .com. You yeah, know, we got days. a dot .org. Dot so org, all yeah. this stuff that we mentioned is at cottonmouth.org, and what we've done is we've uh, arranged it so if you're a band looking for gigs, <laughs> you can go there and find the places to play. If you're yeah. a venue looking for bands, there's lists of bands there. You know, yeah. so it, it's like a worksheet for bands. Works for everybody. Yeah, so uh, we hope people take advantage of it. Cottonmouth.org. I'm glad I came here because I didn't know that. Yeah, just, so, you know, if you're looking for a side that. project, you right. know, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want any side projects. Hey, yeah. There's no way. And then the up. YouTube channel is cottonmouth.dotorg. Yeah. There you go. And yeah. that's where this video is going to be living right. come tomorrow morning. And so. that's all thanks to Halfa yeah. Music Company, who's been our sponsor since we started this. Cool. Pretty much. I still get my stuff fixed there. Those are good guys. There. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Matt Van Voorhis, who's yeah. in uh, Stubblefield Band. Yeah. He What's sponsors up? us as well with uh, Macias Insurance. I'll be done. Right. Barry's awesome. a big music fan. So. so so if we screw everything up, you're still covered. Is that what you're oh, saying? Yeah. Yeah. So far, <laughs> we long, have long, been. As long as they keep sponsoring it, as long as they keep letting mm, us do this. As right. long as they don't listen. Yeah. And, or look. <laughs> you're lucky they'll listen look. to this. <laughs> yeah, that, that's ah, the so thing. There you go. Yeah. Hey, thanks uh, so much for coming down tonight, Mr. Thank Tom you Swain. Guys. Good to see you. I'm my old buddy. Steve Trinity. Thank you for having me. I was, was going to tell another story about Scrappy's wood creations. I used to. Uh, oh, yeah, the Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre well, project. Uh, I'll have to tell that it's one day. It's got to get a little more legal first, but I'm going to tell that story one day. <laughs> <laughs> we have a bunch of them. I was waiting on you to pull something bad out. I was like, yeah, I got stories. I got stories. I, yeah, I was going to say, I, I figured you got as many stories about me as I got about you. We're looking so, to be alive. We're so, looking so. to be alive. I think he's been sitting there trying to remember something about me he could dig up. That's for sure, because I've been pulling some out on him. Yeah. So. You know, I never got to go see Cottonmouth because, like— um, You guys were playing. Yeah, constantly, it seemed like. And so I never got to go see I'm going to have to dig some of you guys up. So, you know, I think Tom booked us a couple I, places. Yeah, I, I remember seeing you guys before. I, I remember seeing, like, oh, I know the singer. He was a young kid in the neighborhood or whatever, and—, and 
you still look like the young kid in the neighborhood guy. I guess I'm just older <laughs> than you. That's just the way it is. Well, that's thank you very much. Well, <laughs> scrap. It's good to see you again. Yeah. I never see anybody anymore. I, I'm an old man now. I just kind of stay home until Tom comes and picks me up and <laughs> takes me out to lunch or takes me to a job or something. Yeah. Terrible yeah. what we've become. It really is terrible. Yeah, well, you know, uh, part of it is is what we talked about earlier, the fear of going out and the repercussions mm-hmm. of what yeah. can happen. And part of it is, you know, you get old and you're just like, I can oh, go out or I can right. stay home. Stay on this couch. <laughs> like, <laughs> kids, yeah, kids and grandkids, that's a whole nother, uh, whole nother dimension that I didn't see coming. I, I wasn't going to live that long to have grandkids and stuff. And now they're, my daughter spits them out like, like marbles or whatever. <laughs> 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 she's got, she had three kids in two years. It's that, like, how do you do that? How do you have three kids in two that's years? That's a visual right there. <laughs> I know, right? I hate visuals. When you were talking a minute ago about something, so, I just got a visual. You, it was you, very nice. You know uh, <laughs> Big George Brock Jr.? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got, what, 49 brothers and sisters? So, look wow. out. You, you have no idea what could could happen. Mm. Oh, imagine that bowl he, of gravy, he, you know, just going between 49 people. His, it was, his dad had 49 children, including, like, Three sets of triplets, wow. five sets of twins, or something. Was like he on that. a mission? He had to be on a mission. He, 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 he was a bluesman. He played. In oh the, yeah. He played yeah. with Howlin' Wolf. He played with Muddy Water. So people, he was, he people was dropped a, their clothes over the blues. I guarantee yeah, you right back, now. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. yeah, and that was a, yeah, it was his dad. So it was back in the day when you know yeah. being a bluesman meant. You know, oh, you're doing it yeah. there. That's the stuff. Yeah. yeah. Good, good. I got visuals when he was talking about passing the kidney stone. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a rough one. That, that's a rough one right that there. It doubled me over. It, man. Well, it reminded me of the videos they used to show us before we'd go on Liberty out in Bangkok, Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it kind of feels probably like a grape going through a straw or something really you have to feel it it takes a long time yeah wow uh, totally uh, underrated that, that word should be much worse uh, I have some giant words in my time uh, uh, i think yeah. i've got a world record yeah you do that. <laughs> oh, we've been told by people that yeah. it sounds like uh you guys are hanging out at your house when you have your guests on it really felt like we were hanging out uh, with is. some old friends tonight because yeah. we we've all been friends for a long yeah, time we've now. been around forever i'm only on chapter one Let yeah. me know when you get another hour okay. i'm looking yeah, forward man. to your book especially the pig pen yeah. stories yeah, yeah well scrap good. stories yeah yeah. yeah, he was he was still scrap at the time. <laughs> Can you believe that? He, he was a, a wood craftsman, though. What do you got there? Oh, Tom's oh, showing pictures. Man, that's the kidney stone. It's as big as a. <laughs> oh yeah, show the people. Oh, you can't, can't it's as big as a copper <laughs> penny. Oh, that wasn't a penny. Oh yeah, oh, that, that wasn't a penny. penny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, I mean, really? <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, I mean, no, I don't man. want to imagine. I'm gonna have nightmares. I'm not gonna be able to sleep I think sleep I'm having tonight. a nightmare about it right now. Yeah. Oh God, imagine that. Peeing would be like I'd hold my breath to wait to see what's coming out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it this or that? Yeah. Yeah. You can fill the holes in your driveway, you know. That wasn't a imagine. stone, that was a rock. <laughs> yeah. That had to be a rock. 16 carat. Not for beginners. <laughs> yeah. You're going to give that to us, net fourth wife. <laughs> <That's a ring. laughs> I'm getting that picture again. I don't know if this is <laughs> oh, All right. Well, we well, can hey. talk to these guys forever, yeah, man. Absolutely. It's been great. It's so. like a family reunion. And, yeah. and, and, and we're, we barely stepped on whoever's gone time i mean we've barely gone over the hour of you there. if ever you can't find nobody just call us again we will come back we don't yeah. have to talk about the, our band we'll just talk about whatever you want to we, talk about we can talk about anything and everything I just except love some of these stories probably yeah. Yeah. Some, some of the stories yeah there's, story, there's a few there's a few things i was, was holding one out on each of you just thinking well if they bury me like that i'm gonna throw them under the bus okay. I, know some, I got some dirt on both of them oh man dirty dirt like, he's gonna be doing <laughs> research for the next year yeah need to sell that story yeah <laughs> Pig pig would be naked on mushrooms, carbon wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man, what a psychedelic world we lived in. Uh, hey, <laughs> speaking of throwing people under the bus, uh, under the bus, uh, I have to admit that I, I talked to Wayne Adams today. Mm. So some of the stuff I brought up is is his fault too. <laughs> I, I, I figured you had yeah. some from him. Yeah. Or somebody in the neighborhood. <laughs> right, so, uh, yeah. Wow. Anyway, oh Wayne, well, he was again. His whole his whole crew was like us. You know, yeah, like, yeah. A bunch of kids in the neighborhood. And, yeah. Wow, he still lives in the neighborhood. It, yeah, yeah. That was back in the days when walking home from school, you were just trying not to get beat up by the older kids, yeah, man. Because yeah. if the older kids grab you and beat you up, now you got to find someone littler and smaller than you to beat them up to feel good about yeah, yourself. There was no phone <laughs> to call nobody either. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? He told me uh, that uh, your dad, Carl, told him that moving from Cottage Chills was his biggest mistake. Yeah. He should have stayed here. Should have stayed there. Yeah. Every, everything was simple, but it was okay. When you sometimes you reach for stuff that's just out of your reach, you should just admit it and fall back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instead, you know. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, 
Thank you guys. Coming in, yep, man. Thanks for having us. If you guys get bored, call us up. Man, we're only a half hour away. We'll just come down. <laughs> That's uh, Steve Tenden and uh, Tom Swain, uh, legends from around the area in the music scene. That's for sure. There you go. And that's a uh, scrap over there. Scrap. <laughs> <laughs> is that not called scrap anymore? Uh, a lot of people do. I mean, my own kids do. Then, yeah. 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 A lot. You know, a lot of people do. But then, uh, I, I went by pig pen for six, eight years. That's kind of a mm-hmm. dirty word. You're not a dirty person. Why would you take that one? <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Scrap or pig pen? Which one? Bo- <laughs> both. Both. <laughs> both. Yeah, I was gonna say. You took the easy ones. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think either one of them show me in a in a nice light. Right. <laughs> and I'm not looking to be shown in a nice light. I'm trying to be honest here. Look Radio, me, not TV. Yeah, look at me, man. I'm not, you know. That's it for right, Riverbend Talent, brought to you by the Halpin Music Company and by Mr. Matt Van Voorce of Macias Insurance. And we uh, offer you the chance each and every week to uh, do your homework, get out, and support local music and art.